What is going on guys? Good morning and welcome back to the channel. We got some new parts in the mail. Again, every single day we get parts in the mail. What we have here is some good old stuff from the dudes over at Delicious. First thing, ECU tech. This is how we're gonna tune the car. I've never seen one of these things. Let's open her up. That's all. Is that really all it is? I was expecting like an access port type of thing. Sheesh. I did not expect that to be that little. It's just a little dongle for the OBD2 port. Looks like we have a little keychain thing right there and then a cable. Jeez. Next item. Okay, cool. I believe this is the controller for our delicious flex fuel kit. This guy here appears to be a fuel pressure sensor. And then this is probably the rest of the flex fuel stuff. Here is the actual flex fuel sensor itself. So I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is all controlled through Bluetooth. So I think we download the delicious app onto our phone and we can see the ethanol content through that thing there. And then we got some fuel lines. We got a mounting bracket, a little clip, fuel line, quick disconnects, some nice lanyards, and some stickers, of course. So Bill over at Delicious Tuning is going to be taking care of the tune on this thing. He knows what we want, he knows what we need, he knows that we're, we're gonna go fast, we wanna go fast. So yeah, I'm excited. This thing should make some sauce. Really exciting to be partnered up with Delicious on this FRS build. So the goal by the end of today is to get everything that you guys see here installed onto the car. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but we're working on a car that I don't, I'm not all that familiar with. Let's go ahead and start out with the Flex Fuel Kit. I think it should be fairly straightforward. We just gotta figure out where exactly we wanna tap into it. I'm sure there's a write-up online that I'm gonna have to go find. And uh, yeah, we gotta figure out where we're gonna mount this guy, which I'm sure that is what that mount is for. Actually, that's probably for the sensor. Hmm. And then we do have our wideband boost gauge in the pod as well for our gauges. Went ahead and found a write-up online. This looks so simple. Let's go ahead and start with the flex fuel sensor itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this sensor bolted onto the bracket with the supplied hardware. Nuts and washers are gonna go on top of the sensor. Allen heads will be on the bottom. So she'll be assembled like that. All right, that's how she should look all finished up. Nuts are on the top. Allen's are on the bottom. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and get this guy mounted up on the car. She is gonna sit right over here. See that stud right there? And then a nut right there underneath our aftermarket shut tower bar. It's gonna sit on those two studs for a very, very clean and simple install. All right, our flex fuel sensor is installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and run the lines. So the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect this fuel line right here. This right here is where our AC lines cross for reference, and it is this line right here. So we're gonna grab, I believe it's the 5 16th quick disconnect. These things should be pretty handy to use. I'm used to using Allen wrenches, so this is kind of a, this is a treat for us. Oh my gosh, that definitely is handy to use. I'm gonna go ahead and link these things down below. I'm not sure if Delicious carries them or not, but if they don't, I'll link some down on Amazon. A few lines off, as you can see, it's gonna squirt a little bit of fuel. So there's two lines total. One has three fittings on it, the other one has two. So we're gonna be grabbing the one with two fittings on it. And all we're gonna do, make sure she's all clipped in, all good to go. That looks sick. Such a nice, clean, simple setup. No jankiness going on, let's move on. Okay, next line, the one with three fittings. And I believe it only has three fittings if you purchase the fuel pressure sensor as well. So this side is gonna connect up there. And then this side, see how do we wanna route this? 
that's how the OEM fuel line's routed and it connects to that bottom port down there. Top clips on like that. And then I believe we just grab our pressure sensor and this guy connects just like that. So pretty much all that is done. Fuel lines are on, everything's good to go. Now we need to move on and figure out where we're gonna mount our module and get all this wiring ran. I believe that's what this Velcro is for, is for mounting that module. Okay, this looks very simple. Here's our module. Looks like we have a ground. That is gonna go to the rear O2 sensor wiring. Wiring runs across. Over here we have the plug-in for the flex fuel sensor and this guy right here should be for the fuel pressure sensor. And this is gonna mount right on top of the fuse box, right next to our HID stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and slap it right here. Let me get all this ran and I'll show you guys exactly what I did. Flex fuel kit is entirely finished up. I have yet to cut the zip ties just so I can show you guys where exactly everything is tied up at. Here's the module. Ground wire is grounded right there, the top bolt for the ECU. Rear O2 sensor wire, which is gonna turn on our module, runs out behind this bracket right here and plugs in right there, center black one right there. And then the two wires that run to the driver's side run underneath here, all zip tied up run right here flex fuel fuel pressure cut the zip ties and we are 100 percent finished up with the delicious flex fuel kit beautiful we have one very very important thing that we need to finalize we gotta let the boys know that we're a little bit fast or will be fast we ain't fast yet but we're gonna be fast one head through it on the driver's side dope now people know we're fast. All right, well, that was way too freaking easy. If you guys wanna pick up that kit, I'll have it linked down below. I also did get the ECU tech from Delicious as well, so I'll have that guy linked down below. We're not gonna be using it until we actually start tuning in the car, which is not gonna happen today because we are needing EBCS and the map sensor. I think that's it. But let's move on to the gauges. We have the boost and AFRs. The biggest thing for installing gauges, for me at least, is always trying to figure out where to route it through the firewall. And we kind of already have that situation solved because we have the stuff for the air ride routed through the firewall right behind the battery. So I'm just gonna dump through that same location. And then I was gonna talk to Delicious, the tuner, about O2 sensors, but being that we just unplugged the rear O2 sensor, it's obvious that we no longer need the rear O2 sensor on the car. So that being said, we can pull the rear O2 sensor out of the downpipe and in place of it is gonna go our AEM wideband sensor. Let's hope this one doesn't burn up right away. What should the first thing we do be do? That didn't make any sense. First thing we're gonna do is route the stuff through the firewall, get the sensor in the downpipe, and then for our boost, this line right here, going to our BOV, we can tee into it right on the back of the manifold and that'll be a perfect solution. So let's get all that done and then we can get the gauges mounted up in the car. You know what guys, there's already so much stuff running through that grommet there that we're actually gonna use the grommet on the driver's side. So it's super easy to get to from the inside and it'll be much closer to our gauges because our gauges will be on the pillar. Let me uh, poke a little hole in that grommet. We can run the wideband wiring and the boost gauge wiring. Took a little bit of love, but we got those wires ran through. So this guy here is for the boost and that long one is gonna run down to the wideband sensor. Let's go ahead and tackle the boost right now. This guy here is our boost gauge sender. We can just mount this somewhere back here so you can't really see it. And then I'll run a line up and just tee right into this line right here that runs to our BOV. All the boost stuff is situated minus the gauge of course in the wiring on the inside well i guess just the sender is connected to the boost source i also ran our wideband wiring right over to where sensor is going to sit on that downpipe so i know we got plenty of length there let's go ahead and tackle the pillar and the gauges or the pillar pod and our gauges so let's make sure this thing actually fits the car and make sure our gauges actually fit this pod Gauges fit perfectly into the pod. This is a rec speed, by the way, and I will link it down below, as well as everything else that we're doing with the gauges. But let's make sure it's actually gonna fit the car. Might be a little bit hard to see, but she fits fine, and this is gonna be sick. 
An FRS with gauges, wow. We're really stepping up in life. So we need to get this right here secured to our factory pillar. And I usually just do that with really, really, really small screws. Double side tape always seems to peel up. It's actually a really, really, really nice fit. It fits perfectly. We need to go ahead and drill holes in the factory pillar for our wiring to pass through. And then we're gonna secure this guy onto the factory pillar itself. All right, here is our pod all set up onto the factory pillar, screwed on, nice clean little screws, cut them off on the backside so they don't hit nothing. Let's go ahead, get all the wiring ran through here, get the gauges in, get this thing back on the car, and then we need to connect stuff to power and ground and get the wideband sensor in, so we're almost done. All right, we got the gauges in. I'm not gonna wire them up because of this. It's not really fun to crawl under this thing when it's on the lift. So we'll do the power and ground whenever we can get the car off the lift. But we can go ahead and pull out the rear O2 sensor and we're gonna swap that out with the AEM wideband sensor. So let's get her up in the air and get that. Out. That didn't sound good. Oh shit. That was my side skirt. <laughs> No, could have been worse. It just off. Oh, the lift must, have, the arm must have moved off the frame. That sounded real bad. That was bad. Let's try that again. Still cracking a little bit. A little sus. Rear O2 is that one right there. Let's pull that guy out. We are done with this setup. We do have to wire the power on ground, but we'll do that later. That's so sick. Nice, beautiful, clean setup. I love pillar pods. We're gonna go take out the Evo 8, but we gotta fix it first. And it's gonna be another temporary fix because I have not got the intercooler pipe welded yet. I've been needing to, but I just haven't had the time with all this FRS stuff going on. Let's pull this thing up in the air. Well, just with the jack. Get her up in the air and we gotta fix that lower intercooler pipe so we can drive this thing and maybe rip it a little bit. Maybe I'll double clamp it so it doesn't rip off again. The exhaust is a little jank, not gonna lie. Exhaust is jank? Is that so what you said? Yeah. Oh weird, it's like it matches your exhaust. So is mine, I was gonna say mine's, well at least the end doesn't look like it's straight up bare pipe. <laughs> I like bear pipe. Wait, I, I don't like bear pipe. I like having bear, I like delivering bear pipe. <laughs> that is queer. That's about as queer as you can get. Okay, we got our necessities. More clamps. I'm gonna run out of those things soon if I keep doing this. And our stage five hairspray. So this right here is our extension piece and that is what we need to be or need to have welded into our actual intercooler pipe so this doesn't keep happening but for today we can just slap her back on all right she's back on let's go rip we got her filled up on some e85 this car scares me but it is what it is
You want to move it? Can you move it? Can you can you know how to move? Don't don't blow it up, Jared. Don't launch it into the tires. <laughs> Jared's gonna rip the Evo about two feet real quick. Okay. Don't blow it up. I thought you were going to tag that pole. Right, you are fucking coming up on that pole real quick. Bro, I see the pole. Oh shit, you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Not the carbon diffuser. Christ. Oh my god, I fucking almost cried. Anyways. And he stalls it. Give us some get There you go. Saturday the 17th, we do have a new Boston drop coming up. This is one of the shirt. Jerry can't drive the car. This is one of the shirts that we're launching that goes right along with what are you doing bro that goes right along with the evo 8. jared needs some assistance real quick yeah, i'm not used to this thing the belt light ain't for you i see dude my my car is like you tap it and it's like Whoa. so on the front we have the og boston bracket design on the back we got the boston drip Coming soon, the 17th, as well as other stuff, but I won't show you yet. Bryce, I almost cried. You're hauling ass up on that pole. Bro, I saw the pole. Well, I didn't know that you saw it. <laughs> We're gonna do a little two step action for the boys. Ready? Okay, I did some diagnosing. I was trying to get this car data logged, the eight data logged for Chag. It's like one of the last data logs ever. And uh, I cannot get the computer to connect to the car, to the ECU. It's saying ECU not found. And I went and tried it on the Evo 10 and it connects fine. So something is going on with the car all of a sudden to where I cannot get into the ECU with Evo scan. It's a little sus, but still hauls ass. 
So that's all that matters. So Bobby and I really like cars. Imagine that. We're gonna go watch Fast 9. We haven't seen it yet. And I feel like every Fast and Furious movie gets a little bit worse and worse. Like they're still cool, but like the OG ones are the best type of thing. So we're gonna go watch Fast 9 and we're taking the STI and we're gonna, we're gonna let it rip. Here's my official Fast 9 review. I slept 90% of it, the 10% I saw. It's a little sus, it was still cool, but I slept damn near the whole thing. Movies are too long for me these days, guys. Way too long. It was like three hours, it felt like. So, yeah, that's my review. Pretty sick review. Also, to everybody who saw that clip on Instagram of Jared backing into the pole. There's a pole behind you, pole! Holy fuck. It wasn't real. I added in that sound effect just so we can get Jared a little bit of roast on the gram. So if you thought it was real, my apologies. The car is fine. I actually did think he was gonna hit the pole though because it's Jared and Jared loves to, to ram into poles. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>